All right, so we've gone over the basics of object-oriented programming, so classes, objects, methods, properties. All right, now we're going to get into static methods and static properties. And you may see the term static classes, but it's not really the classes that are static. It's the methods and properties inside of them. All right, so let's take a look at an example. All right, so let's create a class called user. All right, and we're going to give this a property. We're going to say public static and then give it a um, we'll say min min pass length. Okay, so minimum password length and we'll set that to 5. All right, so notice that I use the static keyword here. All right, so now what we're going to do is create a static method. All right, so we'll say public Uh, static and let's call this validate password. Okay, and that's going to take in a password. All right. Now, let me explain why this is something that would be static. All right. So, let's say we have a property called username. Okay, so username is not always going to be the same, okay? Depending on the user, the username will be different, all right? So this isn't something that you want to be static. This, however, min pass length is always going to be the same, okay? It's always it's always going to be whatever you put here. It doesn't matter if one user or another user is is logging in. It's always going to be the same. So this is a really good example of um what should be static. All right? Same thing with the function or the method. We're going to validate the password by the password length and that's it. Okay? It doesn't matter what the password is. We're just going to check it with this pat min pass length. Okay? So, when you're dealing with uh static elements, it's not so much about the object or the instantiation. Actually, we don't even instantiate static prop properties at all. Um so, let's just continue with this and we're going to say if and we're going to use the function called string len string len so s t r l e n and then we want to pass in password okay so we're going to say if the string length is greater than or equal now normally we would do something like this okay we'd say this and then min pass length all right now when we're using um static properties or static methods we don't use this and we don't use this the word this all right what we need to do is use self okay so we're going to get rid of that and we're going to say self and then we need to use the two colons okay so this here is called the scope uh what is it scope resolution operator all right and that's what we use if something static all right so uh min pass length Okay, so then we just want to return true and then we'll put else return false. Okay, so now we have our static property and our static method. So let's go down here and let's create a variable called password and we'll set it to um we'll just say pass all right and then to check that what we'll do is we'll create an if statement and we're going to say if user and then we want to use our our scope resolution operator and then validate pass or validate password and then pass in password Okay, and then we'll do our echo, and we'll say password is uh, valid. Else, we want to echo out password is not valid. Okay, now if we look at this. 
you'll notice that we didn't instantiate this. We didn't do anything that was like user equals new user. Okay, we don't have to do that when we're dealing with static methods or static properties. Okay, we can just simply take the class name and then the scope resolution operator and then call the function or the method. All right, so let's go ahead and save it and run this. Uh, let's see, unexpected validate password. Line six, public static. Oh, we're going to do function here. Undefined class constant min pass length. Uh, what did I do here? Self min pass length. Oh, we got to use the dollar sign. There we go. Okay, password is not valid. If we change this to, let's say, the word password and reload, we get password is valid. All right. Now, I, if I wanted to just access a property from outside, I can do that as well. All right, so let's go. Let's um, comment this out right here. All right, and let's do echo user. And what is it? Uh, min pass length. OK, if we save that and now you can see we get five. So no instantiation. We just had to just to use the class name and then the property. So hopefully you can see the difference between just regular properties and methods and static properties and methods. All right, so in the next video, I want to take a look at class abstraction.